What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Dragonflame from Minion Games. This is for ages 13 plus for two to five players. It'll take you about 30 minutes to play. And in Dragonflame, you're going to be playing as a ferocious dragon taking control of castles, laying down cards on those castles, sometimes hidden, sometimes not hidden, and then setting fire to villages, trying to gain the most victory points while avoiding curses and knights and other bad things that dragons hate, like dentist appointments. Is it good, though? Let's check it out, and I'll tell ya. All right, and we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Dragonflame from Minion Games. Uh, so first and foremost, we have our handy-dandy rule sheet. It's rare, really about one page, double-sided, full-color pictures, illustrations, examples. It's a very well-done rule booklet and have you up running in no time at all. Big thumbs up on the rule booklet there. So in Dragonflames, you are going to be playing as a dragon, capturing castles, shooting your flames at villages uh, and trying to get the most victory points. You're going to be doing that by laying down cards on castles and shooting fire at villages. I'll go over the components, then I'll show you a little bit of how the game is played. So first and foremost, you are going to have little handy-dandy cheat cards. These are always very useful and nice. In particular, there's going to be some set collection going on in this game. There's, there'll be different ways you're going to score different points with this big stack of cards right here. Now, these cards are going to be cards that you're going to be playing on various various different castles before you capture the castle. So we'll go, we'll go over some of the cards that you're going to have in that deck. Uh, so first and foremost, you'll have some statues like this. These statues will be worth five points if you have one of them. If you have two of them, they will be worth zero. So you absolutely want one, but not two. You'll have knights, because obviously knights hate dragons, and if you have this, at the end of the game, you're just going to have negative three points. You'll have some random jewelry and trinkets and necklaces. They'll just have uh, straight victory points listed on them. I believe they go from like two to four or five points. Uh, next, you're going to have curses. Curses are very, very bad. How curses work are that you're going to lose two glory for each unique chest you have. Now, these are the chests. They're going to come in various different colors. So, uh, say if you had four different colors of chest, then you would lose negative eight points. So, that'd be very, very bad. So, these ones are ones you definitely don't want to acquire. Next, you're going to have some relics. The relics are really, really cool. I believe there's four or five in the game. They're not going to score you any victory points, but they will allow you to do a very cool special thing. Like, one of them will let you peek at one castle before people take them. This one is going to let you swap, at the end of the game, two fire tokens that are on the village. And I'll explain more about that in a second. Uh, next, you're going to have the princess. If you get a, quite a few of these, these could be worth a lot of points. Now, these work are, uh, glory is going to be the number of unique treasures you have. So if you have a very diverse portfolio of treasures and chests and rings and trinkets and relics and all that sort of stuff, I don't think relics are actually in there, this might be worth six, six, seven, eight points. So that could be worth quite a bit. Next, you are going to have these chests. These chests are very good if you can get a lot of the same color. So for instance, how this would work is, let's just pretend that you had had, uh, three red chests, a blue chest, and a green chest. You would only score for the three red chests, and they would all be worth three points because you have three of them, so they would be worth nine points. The rest of the chests that you have of different color are going to be worth negative one. So grand total, you would have negative seven. So if you had four red chests, they'd be worth 16, or five red chests, they'd, they'd be worth 25. So they can really start tallying up if you get a lot of the same color. The last kind of cards you're going to see in them are what are going to be called Dragon Flame cards. They're either going to have one, two, or three Dragon Flames on them. Now, when you acquire these cards, you are instantly and immediately going to take that many of your Flame Tokens right here and place them on the villages up here. There are two main kinds of villages. You're going to have blank fields, which if you put your flame on there, it's kind of womp, womp, womp. It doesn't do anything. Uh, and then you're also going to have these little guys right here. So... If you can burn down this village, or you and all the other opponents can burn down this village by the end of the game, you're going to score victory points. Whoever has the most flames on there is going to score 9, second place will score 5, and third place will score 2. Now, if there's a tie, whoever went there first is going to score those victory points. So as you can see, that relic that we had earlier... Uh, which one was it? Right here. At the end of the game, swap the location of two fire tokens can really be valuable in helping you potentially earn quite a bit of points on one of these guys. 
So we uh, we have the three dragon flame thing. We take our three dragon flame, and we can go either horizontal, horizontal or vertical in any direction we want. So let's just say we wanted to do this one and this one, but unfortunately that would mean that we'd have to play on this one, which would be a waste. So obviously the ideal thing would maybe to go down here or go right there, but eventually there are, some of them are going to burn down, and you're going to have to put some on the fields, which will kind of stink. Uh, but everyone's going to be putting their unique little burn tokens on these guys, and as I mentioned earlier, the only way anyone's going to score points at the end of the game is if you burn down the village. So, for instance, if you filled up four out of these five, no one would score any points for this at the end of the game. Now, let's get down to the castles. There's going to be two kinds of castles. There's going to be red castles, and there's going to be blue castles. Now, these are completely identical, and they're actually double-sided cards. So before you, we have the castle side, and on the back, you're going to have the player order side. So when you first start the game, what's going to happen is you're going to have, uh, well, as many, as many as you have players, and you're going to randomly deal them out to people. So this person would go fifth, this person would go fourth, second, third, so on and so forth. Now when it gets to your turn, you're going to look at your card, and that's going to tell you where you're going to play your cards. So in a three, four, and five player card game, you're going to be dealt at the beginning of your turn three cards, and during your turn you're going to play three cards. So there's really not too much analysis paralysis in that avenue. So let's take a look at the first and the fifth player. You're going to take turns playing down one card at a time. So the first player would lay down one of their cards face up. That's what this means. And the second player would play one of their cards face up. And then the third player, then the fourth player, then the fifth player would play one of their cards face up. Then it would go back to the first player. They'd play their, uh, they'd play their second card face up because it's lit up. Then the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, so on and so forth. However, once it gets to the fifth player, as you can see here, that little card is dark. That means instead of playing it face up like this, they're going to actually be able to play it face down, which is really interesting because they might play something good because they want to go there, or they might play something bad because they're they're trying to make you know something poor, so maybe they'll make a good one bad, so on and so forth. But once you get done with that, there should be 15 cards scattered about uh, these uh, these six castles out here. And uh, if you play with less players, then you'll have uh, less cards. Uh, you'll have less castles, I should speak. So now you're going to get to the phase where you're going to choose one of the castles. So whoever is the first player is going to pick their castle first. So they have what their pick of whatever they want to get. They can pick whichever castle they like, but the key is they're not going to know what's underneath these hidden ones right here. Uh, so that could be really interesting. Another thing I want to mention about these castles is that the number one castle can only have two cards on it. The number two castle can only have three cards on it, and the rest of the castles can have as many cards on them as you like. So you could not put a third card on this, even though it's there. So looking here, this would be an obvious choice to not pick, because it's only one dragon flame and it's a curse, so no one would take that one. And you're never forced into taking a castle, which is always nice because you always play with one more castle than there are players. So even the person at the end, say the fifth player, is going to have an option on which castle they'd like to take. So let's just pretend this guy takes this one right here because he knows that this is a jewel. He would immediately take this action. So he would lay down three dragon flames, so he might go right here. This seems like a good choice. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And he would discard this card, get out of here, and then he would put this three-point gem in his hoard at the end of the game. That's going to give him three points. Now, he also would take this castle, flip it around, and now next round, he is going to go third. So he's so when you take these, you're also going to know uh, where your turn order is for the most part, even though, for instance, if no one took the one, which probably wouldn't happen, this person would actually, in actuality go second, because this person would go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, because we're in a five-player game. At which point, you would then take the red cards that everybody's using, flip them over, and they would become the new castles. And you deal out three more cards, rinse, wash, and repeat. The game is over when you don't have enough cards to deal out to all the players, at which point you're going to tally up how many cards you have, or how many victory points you have in your hoard. You're going to tally up how many victory points you have based on the villages that are burned down, and whoever has the most victory points is going to be the winner of Dragon Flames. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Dragon Flame for Minion Games. One of my final thoughts. Let's go to the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the cons side of the game, it's not going to be for everybody, two to five players, so if you got a larger game group, it might not be for you. Also, two players, I can't really, re I can't recommend this game. I, I didn't like it with two players, I didn't think it was that good, so if you're looking at this from a two player perspective, I just can't recommend it. Uh, three players is okay, but definitely not two players. I won't play it again with two players. 
Continuing on with the con, the little tiny dragon flames, the, the flames, that's an added really cool touch that are actually flames, but they're really, really tiny, and if you lose one, you're probably never going to fight it ever again unless you really get down on your knees and look for it. So, but that's more of a nitpick than anything. I understand that the box is compact, so they had to make do with what they had there, but they do look like flames, which is a nice thing. So that's definitely more of a nitpick. Any other cons I have with the game, I can't really think of. Moving on to the pros, Dragonflame is a great small box game. I highly recommend this game for four and five players. There's a lot of different reasons why. The, the main reason that I really like this game is it says it plays in 30 minutes, and it really does play in 30 minutes. You saw the rule booklet if you watched the middle part of the video. It is a short, concise, compact rule booklet that will have you up and running in no time at all. Also, the game is very easy to teach, which I found a little bit surprising because there's quite a few moving parts in this game. you got a little bit of the area control with the villages, and you got the hidden information with, with how you play the cards down. And you uh, there, and you have like set collections with how you're collecting different things in your horde. But it's all like really basic stuff. So any gamer is just gonna pick this up in no time at all. Now I didn't play with any uh, newer gamers, anything like that. So I can't speak to them. But I still think they would probably pick this up. Uh, maybe having a little bit of trouble with the set collection. But but definitely, I really like that. Very simple to learn. Very simple to teach. And it actually plays in 30 minutes. So moving onward, I really liked how the different facets of the game worked. I like how clever a lot of things were. Like how you play down cards and you want to go first because then you get to pick whichever castle you want. You're like, yes, I'm guaranteed to get that castle. But then at the same time, all the cards you play are going to be face up and you don't want to be giving your opponents that valuable information. Whereas it kind of stinks to go last because you're stuck with whatever castle is left or whichever two castles are left. But then at the same time, you get to play down a good chunk of your cards face down. And I like that. And I also liked playing cards face down because sometimes you really want to play great cards face down because people might think they're bad cards. But then sometimes you actually do get to play bad cards down. So you know exactly what they are and you just get to watch people take them. And that's a lot of fun. The artwork's great. The components are great. The box is nice and compact. It's, it's, it's not flipping over, or what am I trying to say, it's not like, it's not like you can put everything in there and it fits in there very, very nicely, they include a whole bunch of baggies for the little dragon flames, just everything about this game is very, very good, except for the two and three player versions of the game, two players bad, three players okay, um, so overall, dragon flame, if you were in the market for a four or five player game that is quick, compact, easy to teach, uh, portable, I definitely, absolutely recommend you check out Dragonflame. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be one that is going to stick on my shelf for quite some time. Great little game, Dragonflame from Mini Games. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And in the comments below, let me know what would you do if you were a dragon. Now, I put a little bit of thought into this at work because, you know, I have two and a half hours of nap time and I was like, what would I do if I were a dragon? It was actually kind of terrible what I would do as a dragon because my, my line of thinking was, as soon as people knew they were a dragon, they would try to hunt me down and either A, kill me, or B, put me in a circus. And there's nowhere a dragon can really go to hide that well. So you know what I realized? I would go to, like, Greenland, where there's just a boatload of ice, and I would just sit there and I would melt all the ice, and I would extinct the human population by overflowing everything with water, because who the hell cares? I can, I can walk, and I can eat, or I can, I can fly. So, yeah, I would end the human population of our dragon by melting the polar ice caps, and then Al Gore would blame it on global warming, and I don't know. But what would you do with a dragon? I'm sure it's probably a better answer than mine. But as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Dragonflame. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.